there are no government anywhere in the world can successfully fight corruption without the involvement of the citizenry. It's not possible. And in a country like our own, where majority of our people are victims of corruption, we must begin to mobilize the people themselves to own the fight, make it their own battle, and demand accountability from all public officers and those who render public service in the private sector. What I mean is that there are private sector organizations, like the media, the private media, religious bodies, and so on and so forth, that minister unto the public. And so you, they also owe it a duty to render account to their members. And for civil society organizations that thought that they enjoy some immunity, the Kama, the Companies and Allied Matters Act of 2020, has now made adequate provisions to ensure accountability on the part of NGOs, including religious bodies. In other words, no organization in Nigeria, whether private or public, can now operate above the law when it comes to accountability. Now, let me say that the anti-graft agencies, particularly the EFCC and ICPC, have largely, largely be very kind, they have been very kind, or usually kind, to professionals who have been involved or who have aided and abetted their clients or customers to commit grave, grave corrupt practices. And what do I mean? A fat cat is charged with corrupt practices. And when you investigate, you will find that in the course of buying properties, you will have gotten some estate firms to carry out some investigation because having stolen money, he doesn't want to be cheated. So he doesn't want to buy a property that cannot be, uh, that has been bought by somebody else. So he asked an estate firm to carry out due diligence. Yes, he's giving a report that the property is free from encumbrances. What happens? You hire a lawyer. Since I'm a public officer, I cannot afford to buy this property in my name. So can you help me? So the lawyer registers a company or buys a company for him. Usually, the directors may be fake or underage children. From there, you move to the bank, where he maintains an account that does not bear his name. The bank manager, who is a professional, an accountant, colludes with the public officer and huge sums of money, which he knows cannot be legitimate income. The money is released, and the property is bought. So by the time the investigation is carried out, the anti-graft agencies are simply satisfied with the fact that these professionals collaborate in the investigation by 
unquote, be trained their client. Because they are told, you are not our target. Your client is our target. And so you need to cooperate. But in other parts of the world now, professionals who are said to be gatekeepers in money laundering cases are dealt with by the law much more now so as to discourage professionals from aiding and abetting corrupt practices. A Nigerian was charged in England for serious corrupt practice, serious cases of corruption. This Nigerian pleaded not guilty in Nigeria. And instead of striking out the case, the court said, you are here by the charge and acquitted, without a trial. The same man got to England. When he knew that he could not manipulate the system, he pleaded guilty. But that was not all. Apart from, apart from convicting him, his lawyer was jailed seven years for assisting him to commit the offense. His banker was jailed five years for assisting him to commit the offense. Now, for lawyers and bankers in that country, you have to decide whether you want to go to jail because you want to make some little money. And that is why professionals are now held vicariously liable for the criminal actions of their client. And that is why professional bodies would like to be made to sit up. Our country is run by professionals. Please quote me. Our country is run by professionals. Since 1960, all the civilian governments, First Republic, Second Republic, and this Republic, have been headed by professionals. Accomplished teachers, First and Second Republic, Tafar Balewa was a teacher. Sheu Shagari was a teacher. Since 1999, our presidents have either been university lecturers, prof, or profs, or professional military officers. Between 1966 and 1979, 98. Our country was ruled by military dictators who claimed to be professional in their own right. Therefore, our country since 1960 has been run by professionals. Under the current democratic dispensation, the office of the Attorney General at the federal and state levels are by the Constitution, sections 174 and 211. The Attorneys General and Ministers of Justice, Commissioners of Justice, and Attorneys General in the state shall be senior lawyers all the judges in Nigeria of the course of record are senior lawyers. You can't be a judge unless you are at least 10 years standing. Apart from two members, the 24 members of the National Judicial Council, all are judges and lawyers. Even though it's not in the Constitution, 
the Federal Ministry of Health, and all state ministries of health are headed by senior doctors. All the public hospitals in Nigeria are headed by senior doctors. There are statutes, statutes that have prescribed certain professionals that must be members of the board. So, our country is largely run by professionals. But why have these professionals run the country aground? Why is our country not doing well? You are told that trillions are being marked to procure arms and ammunition to fight insurgency. So why are we losing the battle? Against bandits, against terrorists, against kidnappers. It is because of the culture of impunity in our country. In other words, professional bodies have failed to call their members to order, to call their members to account. As a lawyer, if you are convicted, you automatically lose your right to practice law. And that goes to many that for many organizations, that you have brought your organization into disrepute. So the duty for professional bodies, therefore, uh, as of the last count, there are about 107 registered professional bodies in our country. And others have applied to register. Some of these bodies are created by statute, by the parliament. Others start as friendly societies and now seek registration with the CAC. But all of them have ethical standards, code of conduct. Any member who deviates from the provisions of the code are liable to be disciplined. And if you have found one thing, you may lose your right to practice the profession. And that is why our professional bodies have to wake up and ensure that doctors who issue reports when a big man is charged before a court must be sure that the defendant is actually indisposed. Because if you are found to have issued a fake medical report, that may be the last one you will write. And so, the role of professionals is so important in fighting corruption. While professionals are called gatekeepers, in money laundering cases, is that it is not possible for a public officer to successfully keep his or her loot and hide the proceeds of crime without the connivance of professionals. So if you want to fight corruption, the anti-graft agency must beam their searchlight on professionals. And unless you make an example of a few professionals, you cannot succeed in the fight against corruption. Take the banks, for instance. Apart from a few people who have a panoply of security forces, 
who may keep money in some stock away or in their homes. Majority of people will have to patronize the banks. So if the banks are taking it very seriously, if the anti-graft agencies devote sufficient time on the activities of the banks, you can go a long way in fighting corruption and corrupt practices. Now, there was a big man, a president, in fact, let me say, a former president of America, who was alleged to have had what they call inappropriate relationship with a girl. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Who I'm talking about. Now, he narrowly missed removal from office, but he was impeached by the House of Representatives. And everybody thought that was all. In His Majesty, in all his powers, that president who happened to be a lawyer was suspended by the bar of his state for five years and made to pay a fine of $25,000 for bringing the association to disrepute. That's the association of lawyers. He was going to be dismissed as an advocate of the Supreme Court of his country. He said, please, don't go that far. I had better resign. And for that reason, he can never appear as a lawyer in the Supreme Court of America. Talking of Bill Clinton, one of the most popular American presidents in recent time. But what happens here? Not only do lawyers serve government that disobey court orders, some attorneys general come out, come to the public to say, we are disobeying this order of court because of security, national security. Meanwhile, national security is part of the rule of law. And nothing happens. Even when you write a petition, it will not be treated because a big man is involved. Right now, I think this is the sixth week, six weeks that judicial staff in Nigeria have been on strike. Why? All the governors, including lawyers amongst them, have refused to comply with Section 121 of the Constitution, which prescribes that there shall be financial autonomy for the judiciary in order to strengthen the democratic process. Houses of assembly shall also enjoy financial autonomy. Again, so that the principle of separation of powers can be consolidated. But because of the refusal of governors to comply with the Constitution, all judicial staff are on strike. Courts have shut down. All staff of houses of assembly are on strike. You know the implication of that, particularly for the courts. People are languishing in custody cannot have their cases heard. Those who are alleged to have committed offenses cannot be taken to court. And so this kind of development occurs only in a failed state or a banana republic. Because it has a lot of implications for courts to shut down. It's almost an anathema in a democracy. But this is what is happening here. We are asked if the Nigerian Bar Association gets the Nigerian Bar Association 
has brought out, applied his own rules, professional rules, rules of professional conduct, his own constitution, called the NBA constitution, emphasizes respect for the rule of law, respect for human rights. And that any lawyer who willfully disobeys a court order or encourages disobedience to court order has brought the association to disrepute. So if the NBA had formulated a policy, for instance, to say, no member of our association shall serve a government that does not respect court orders. Do you understand what I'm saying? We won't be in this mess. And every government must have an attorney general. So if lawyers, no, we won't serve your government. If I serve your government, I will be in trouble in my association. I could lose my license to practice. Everybody will sit up. A governor was invited last year to address the bar. And as soon as the name was published, lawyer said no. If he insists on featuring this man in our program, we will boycott the conference for him. He thought it was a joke. Even though you can enjoy immunity as a governor, but you cannot enjoy immunity from being sanctioned by the public. And so the leadership of the bar was forced to say, hey, Your Excellency, we are sorry to have invited you. Our members are saying they don't want you to address them. And that was it. So, and that must go for all professional bodies. We must stop promoting those who subvert the Constitution and the rule of law. And the media, please, the media, please, stop giving funny awards to the enemies of democracy in this society. You can only honor those who deserve honor. But please, when you honor a governor who is reputed, who is well known, to be an enemy of democracy. You are not helping your profession. You can be sanctioned by your professional body if it is up and doing. Now, let me just say that under the Constitution, Section 22, the media, the press, the radio and television station shall promote public accountability and transparency in government. That is the duty imposed on the media. And I've told you about lawyers, that lawyers shall promote justice and the rule of law. All citizens, all of us, shall ensure that corruption and abuse of office are no longer part of our culture. Section 15, subsection 5, the state, the government of Nigeria, shall abolish corruption and abuse of office. Section 24 of that same constitution has now imposed a duty on all of us to help all law enforcement agencies, including the anti-corruption agencies, to fight corruption and illegality in our country. If this duty has been imposed on us, to what extent are we complying with the provisions of the Constitution? Let me therefore say that we are not as helpless. There was an attorney general in this country who engaged in subversion of the rule of law consistently. And what happened to him? A civil society organization wrote a petition. This guy 
It's not a fit and proper person to be a senior lawyer, to be a senior advocate of Nigeria. The authorities investigated the petition and suspended him for three years. That was not all. A politician filed an action in court and displayed a letter where this guy, where the man, in his capacity as the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, wrote to an agency of government, don't obey this court order. There was no appeal. Don't obey this order. So a, the politician that was a victim of such illegality went to court and sought a declaration that this guy is not a fit and proper person to hold any public office again in Nigeria. You know what happened? The court found that the allegation was indeed true. And the court ordered that never again shall you be allowed to hold a public office in Nigeria. In fact, he went to the court of appeal and lost. The point I'm making, therefore, is that if we are prepared to get our professional bodies to work and enforce ethical standards set out in our constitutions and rules of professionalism, our country will not be in this manner. The organization that has brought us here to, today, Ida, once found out that I was a judge in Lagos who had a pension, a pension for granting ex party order against the EFCC, the ICPC, the Office of the Attorney General, and the Office of the Inspector General of Police, not to arrest investigate or prosecute certain corrupt practices. So what did Hida do? Hida investigated and got hold of seven of such court orders, expert orders, and approached the National Judicial Council. No, you cannot retain this guy. He is frustrating the war against corruption. Contrary to the decisions of the Supreme Court in certain cases. And the NJC so found, found that the allegations were true and they suspended the judge and recommended to the president to remove him. I think Larry will know what has happened to that case. I, I don't know now, you know. But the point I'm making, therefore, is that we are not a surplus and I'm challenging either another civil society organization to wake up and beam their searchlight on professionals who are aiding and abetting corruption in our country. The last one is Central Bank of Nigeria. It's people likely by bankers and accountants. That body has colluded with the World Bank and IMF to destroy the Nigerian economy through dollarization. The, the bank does not want to say we are dividing the Nigerian currency. But since our economy is import oriented, the dollar is raised up against the price of the Naira. And so, your currency becomes valueless. And that is what is going on. Again, the accountants, the body of accountants, the body of bankers must take up the central bank and ask the central bank to justify the destruction of the economy of Nigeria, contrary to Article 21, subsection 5 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, which provides that the practices of international monopolies 
like IMF and World Bank, shall not be allowed to destroy the economy of the African people, the economy of Nigeria and others. And that is what is going on. I therefore, would like to thank Hida for bringing us together on this occasion to examine the role of professionals. And I also would like to congratulate all the professional bodies that are here. But Hida, you have your job cut out for you. I've already, and I will give you the list of the 107 professional bodies in Nigeria and their addresses to see how you can contact them and bring them on board. But let me say that most professional bodies, just like ESCC and ICPC, will require you to write petitions against their members. So henceforth, you have to be vigilant. And when you find even in the presidency that a media man has misled the public, as in a recent case, where unfortunately 344 young people students were kidnapped, and a prior senior editor used the presidency to say on BBC that only the and the guild of editors didn't sanction. Nanda did the NUJ <laughs> consider it a serious matter. So, Larry, next time, Hida will have to file a petition to the appropriate agency. And that is the only way we can get this country to move in the right direction. Thank you very much. <laughs>